Hey everybody, Avid Assistant here. In this video, I'm just going to walk you through how you would set up streaming your Avid out over the internet to other participants for an online review session using Looper IO. Now, I did mention Looper in another video, which dropped at the same time as this one, uh, talking about different methodologies of remote working um, and particularly discussing Looper as part of my favorite way of remote working. So, if you haven't seen that, um, you know, there'll, there'll be a link down below or on the screen somewhere where you can jump over and take a look at that. If you have seen that and now you want to learn more about Looper and that's why you're here, then you're in the right place. So let's take a look at how easy it is to get yourself up and running on Looper and a look at some of the features and and how they work. And if you have any additional questions about how it works or the features or um, the cost or any additional things like that, just drop a comment down below and I'll answer it just as soon as I can. But that's enough intro, let's get into it. Right, so from Avid, we're just going to jump over to our browser. First of all, you'll just need to uh, sign up with Looper, just make an account, it'll be very quick. Uh, then a couple of things just to check before you before you get started is that you have a Mac or a PC with at least a 4-core CPU or 16 gig of RAM. Um, that's pretty low specs to ask for these days. An 8-core CPU is recommended though. Now, if you're using an Intel uh, processor, any sort of i5, i7, um, the odds are you'll have hyper-threading as well, so you can sort of double using the virtual cores there too. And of course, you're going to want an internet connection with at least an upload and download speed of 10 megabits per second. They highly recommend that you plug in Ethernet as well. Don't do this over Wi-Fi. I have used over Wi-Fi and not had a problem, but I am in the UK and houses are pretty small and I'm kind of right next to the router, so take from that what you will. Next step would be to download and install LBS. Now, LBS is basically Looper's own version of OBS. Um, it's their own skinned version of it for this particular purpose. Next, you're just going to want to enable NDI within Media Composer. Uh, that is the protocol that we're going to use to send our Avid out. Yeah, you can do this by right-clicking on this button here. This is our hardware software out. This is where we stream our Avid out to something. It's already active here because I'm streaming it through a Blackmagic Ultra Studio to a third monitor. But at the same time, we can also send out to Newtech NDI. So I'm going to select that. And then once you're broadcasting it over the net, you get like a little wave. You can see that there flashing to let you know you're broadcasting. So that's on. And next up, we're going to want to open LBS. So I'll just grab that and open it up. Now you can see this is already seeing my avatar because I already have this set up and I've used it several times, but we'll go through what we need to do. So first off, you're going to want to make sure that your base resolution, your output resolution are set to what you're using in the edit. Nine times out of 10, this is 1080p. Your base canvas resolution is what it's capturing and your output resolution is what it's streaming out on Looper, what, what your clients will see on Looper. So setting these both to 1080p. FPS for this project is actually at 24, so I'll set it to that. <clears throat> then within our LBS, we're going to come over here to source. So I'm just going to get rid of the one that I have here and I'll configure it again. So we're just going to hit the plus icon um, to, you know, create a source here. We're going to go with NDI source. So this is taking the NDI from our edit. And then under source name here, we're just going to want to click the drop down menu. You can see from there over here. And uh, and we're going to click the option here um, that is jackbrown.avid. So this is the, the, the feed coming from your Avid for NDI. Then under latency mode, you're going to want to select lowest, sync, you want to select it to network, and bandwidth, you want set to highest. So I'll click OK on that. Then you can see it's already recognized my picture. Right now, one other little tip that they give you here that's optional that you can do is Avid doesn't support full screen playback while you're streaming over NDI. So if full screen playback is something you use instead of a client um, breakout box, like an Asia box or a Blackmagic box like I'm using, you can right click on the canvas here and select windowed projector preview, which will give you a window um, of your, you know, uh, avid out that you can scrub a lot. I'll just change the picture on the timeline here. Avid always dominates the screen when I select it, but I'll just change something else as you can see. Um, and this is updating in live time. This is, I can't keep them on both on the same screen at the same time. Um, maybe if I do this actually, yep, there you can see if I scrub through the timeline here, you can see it in the background updating in real time. So if you use full screen playback, you could put this on your other monitor and then you would be able to see in full screen everything that your clients are seeing. Um, but not uh, something that I particularly use, so I'm just going to close that out. 
and put my avid back. Another important optional thing to mention here um, as well is your quality settings down here. So if you're not getting the best playback in general uh, later on when you're actually doing the stream, which might make for a better experience for those watching with a slower internet connection. Um, so you can change the audio bitrate and the video bitrate. Um, so I think by default this is set to two and a half megabits, um, which is their, their balance setting. I usually use the high setting of 4000. Um, I could try going higher. Um, I think their highest that they have here is 20 megabits a second, which is actually very high quality. Um, but 4 megabits a second for an edit review, I find to be perfectly adequate. And 160 um, kilobits per second is the default for the audio bitrate, but I just kind of bump that up to the max since audio isn't going to take as much um, bandwidth as video is. So I just crank that up. But you can increase and decrease these settings to improve your stream uh, depending on the performance that you're getting with your setup that you have. Now lastly, what you're gonna to wanna to do is set up a room in Looper um, that you're gonna to use to host all of your meetings and all of your streams. Now my account has one room available and I already have it set up and I don't see how I can delete it to set up again, uh, but I can go into my room settings and you know reconfigure it from scratch. But just so that you know, the button will be floating up on the main dashboard as soon as you log in asking you to set up a room it should be around here so i'll jump into the settings here and we'll just take a look at what you'll need to do to get this up and running so first of all you just give your room a name uh, you can name it whatever you like i've just called mine jack's edit room uh, you can set whether you want to communicate using a video chat uh, a voice chat or none uh, if you just want this to be your avid out and you have the call elsewhere you can do that uh, you can configure your microphone settings, whether you use that push to talk function that I messaged earlier, um, or an open mic. I usually stick with the open mic because I've never found feedback to be a problem on this platform, but push to talk is there if you like it. Text chat is also on the right and available by default. Um, and you can set the amount of time um, before your annotations fade and disappear as well. Um, so you can keep them visible until manually cleared if you like, or they stay until 30 seconds. Uh, but I generally find uh, leaving it at the default as five seconds is kind of more than ample um, time to express your point that you're trying to make with your annotations. But you can configure all of these things to, to your own liking and to what's going to work best for you. Once you've got all this set up, you're, you're only going to have to set it up once and then your room is there. And then all you have to do is turn on NDI, click start streaming in LBS, and enter the room and you know and the clients just have to enter the room at their end as well and then that's you done but moving on uh, in our room settings here uh, we can set up access we can make this public so anyone who has the room link or uh, just our teammates so you can you can invite teammates to your room's plan on looper and you can set it so only they can access um, i tend to keep mine as public so that i can just send specific links to people um, and then I'm only going to be in the room at specific times when I'm broadcasting a call anyway. Plus you can have a lobby as well. So I have a little waiting, waiting room and then you have to approve everybody as they join anyway. So similar to Zoom. Now the last important actual setup thing that you'll need to enable here is under the streams part, you're going to want to enable RTMP. That is the protocol that you'll be using. Now in Avid, if you had the ultimate version, it is possible you could probably set this up with SRT since that is baked into Avid Ultimate packages and maybe be a slightly more secure stream. Um, but for most setups, we're gonna go with RTMP. That's the default and I've found it to work very, very well. And lastly, in the room settings here, we can also, if you like, display some uh, project info like the director, production company, shooting location, uh, that can be displayed. Um, we just have to obviously type all that information in by adding an item, you know, and, you know, adding all of that metadata. And then all that information can be displayed um, during our stream as well, if you like. Uh, we can also enable downloads, allowing us to pass small files back and forth during the session. And this is mostly for stuff like scripts, storyboards, schedules. So if you're having an, an edit review session and when you're talking about something else coming up, someone mentions that they don't have the edit schedule, you can just fire it to them through this then and there. And these files won't be hosted by Looper, they won't be left there afterwards. Um, no files are kept or stored. Um, this is just for during that session. But once you've had a look through all that and you've customized the settings to how you like them, just hit save changes, your room's all set up. Now we just have one last thing to do to link LBS and our Avid out to a room here, and that is called Stream Keys. Um, those who have used Evercast may be familiar with the term. So we just click on these three dots here, 
and then click on stream keys. Now I'm not going to show you mine, I'm going to have this blurred here, but there is an option just to the right of the server URL and the stream key allowing you to copy it quickly to your clipboard. And that is to enable you to copy that information very quickly in here into LBS, your server and your stream key. And that's what's connecting the LBS uh, and the stream into Looper, essentially. And again, you only have to do all the setup once. Uh, once you've got it all connected, it's just ready and it just remembers it. And in fact, once you've got that into LBS there, you can just click Start Streaming. You can see it's streaming now, it's like Stop Streaming. It sees how much of the CPU it's using, um, how live, how long the, the stream has been going, and uh, the current bitrate of the stream. And for me to see that, I'm just gonna jump back over to Looper and I can just enter my room there to start the call. But what I would do just before, just before I do that, is I'm gonna click share, and then you can click here, copy invitation, which will give you a, a full invitation typed out, um, you know, with some little nifty stuff from Looper as well, um, that you can copy into an email and send off to all of your participants that you want to join the call. And then when they click on this, it will jump straight to the call in their browser. They don't have to do anything else, they just have to click on the link and join. And once you've sent that out to everyone, you can hit enter there. Then you just want to confirm your camera and microphone settings. So I have mine here. Um, you can see wavy wave. This is in real time. Yay. Um, you can click to remember these settings if you want it to remember. But I kind of dump my cookies constantly, so it's not able to do that with me. Um, but you just hit go. And that's you. So I'm going to just jump back to Avid and just change this to a slightly more interesting frame where things are happening say when it's daytime yeah like that and then we can see it's it's updated so here we are we'll have our call here um, we can mute and unmute the stream uh, by default the stream is muted for you because obviously you've got local playback of the edit we can view um, my camera feed here um, and all the other members of the call will be dotted down here um, I can click and annotate on the screen Yay, hello. And then we can see it fade away um, after the five seconds of each annotation. And that's you off to the races. And there are heaps of other functions and features within this call that I could bang on about for ages. I absolutely love this platform, uh, but I won't, don't worry. Um, all your controls are sort of along the right here, you know, for say your text chat between members of the call, uh, downloads, other things like that, audio mixer, um, you know, quality details, blah, blah, blah. Um, I recommend if you do download Looper and you do have a try, um, just click around, you know, try out all the buttons, see what's there, see what's on offer. And also the support page on their website does have an extremely well formatted, detailed list of all the features and how to use them. And they've got detailed setups of how to make this work for individual NLEs. There's one for Adobe there. Um, I've just went through the steps for the Avid one. Um, Final Cut Pro even, uh, After Effects, as well as full tutorials for, for different things like using LBS, using Rooms, um, using Looper Stream Connect for Apple TV, um, iPad and iPhone. So yes, there is an iOS app um, for this as well for those at the receiving end. As well as being able to view this in a browser, you can use their app to you know receive the call at their end as well, which is very nice, particularly for the Apple TV function since um, you know, it's nice to say show on a, a TV or on a boardroom or something if there's a bunch of people watching. But there you have it. There is our looper call uh, where we can have our remote edit sessions. I have tested this out, as I've said, with uh, a number of people locally and even with one or two of um, our Patreon members as well. So yeah, I can uh, definitely vouch for um, the, the Looper platform. And yeah, I hope you all give it a go and let me know how you get on. Um, and if you do have any trouble, um, just let me know or even contact the support at Looper. They're super helpful guys, are very responsive on email as well. Very, very helpful, very kind. Um, so yeah, um, I'm sure you'll have a great time.